My name is Nicole Stitchtree and this is my YouTube channel. This is a place to talk about slow making, knitting and sewing mostly. Today's episode is sewing session, so all about sewing. I'm coming to you from the lands of the Turrbal and Yagara people from the city of Nanjin, Australia. It's Brisbane, Australia. It's been a while since my last sewing video, three months or more. I um, took quite a bit of time off over the Christmas period. Um, I actually rewatched that last sewing video um, so I can remember what I talked about. And it's actually really nice to see that I've started to sew up some of the fabrics that I got. So for example, what I'm wearing today, I said I was going to sew a deer and doe my associates dress with um, the cornflower blue um, A and R linen last time, and I did it. So here it is. Um, you can barely see the check unless you come up close. This very subtle grid texture that's on it. Um, I'll put in some photos, some better photos. I love this dress. I've been wearing it basically all the time. Um, it's been really filthy hot here in um, Brisbane, and. Well, yeah, it's just really breezy. I actually sewed a size with a lot of ease um, because I didn't want to grade between sizes. Um, and also I think it makes a good throw, the dress and the linen, the easy breezy. So it's been great for the summer. Um, I will say that I made the view A with the ruffled sleeves and the extra gathered tier. Um, these ruffled sleeves just kind of bunch a bit because I often have my arms like this. So um, they don't, you know, even if I iron them, they only stay that way for about um, five minutes. So that's a little bit annoying. I think if I make another one, I'll just stick with the short sleeve version. But I do like the bottom tier a lot. Also love this um, neckline, this um, mandarin collar um, down into just a few buttons. Um, this was like a new color for me. I wouldn't normally go for a blue, but I have, and um, I've just gotten so many compliments on how well it suits me. So I think I will try, um, keep trying to um, use colors outside of my usual palette, which is um, pinks and lavenders and greens and things like that. So um, anyway, uh, other than what I'm wearing, news from me um, over the last few months, if you don't watch my knitting episodes, that's fine. Um, I've been growing lots of flowers. So I've got a lovely bouquet here today. I've got a gorgeous dahlia, big dahlia, and these lovely dark um, scabiosa flowers, as well as just some um, light purple zinnia. Um, I've been, well, well, I went to Japan on holiday for a few weeks and in typical Nicole fashion, just two weeks before I left, I was like, yeah, I can make a quilted coat. Um, it's the perfect opportunity for it. And yeah, it, um, it was like a real sweatshop of my own making, making a quilted coat in the summer and just sewing, 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 sewing. Um, but I do have that to share with you today with my finished objects. Um, I might move straight into that. I'm actually recording this before work. Um, it's quite early, so I'll probably look a little bit tired. So, uh, and my dogs are in the room, so ignore them if they make some funny noises. But um, yeah, I've got to probably power through, so I'm not late for work. Um, finished objects. Um, so it's been ages since my last video. I might start with some of the Christmassy stuff that I did. Um, you'll notice that last time I had all this um, bunting uh, panels from Spotlight by Jocelyn Proust and I made up some of that but I still have quite a bit so um, yes it's a work in progress I'll do more this year for this year's Christmas but um, that it adds such a nice um, look and festive feel to the um, house when I put all the bunting up. I also did finish the advent calendar quilted wall hanging thing that I was making but I can't for the life of me remember where I put it now that I packed it away. So I'll just pop in a photo 
Um, yeah, it turned out really great. And in my last video, I mentioned how I love quilting, I love piecing, but then I hate doing the actual quilting, the sandwiching and then stitching. But it was far more enjoyable last time, I think because I used a different batting. I just used fleece and it went so smoothly through my machine. The first time I quilted, I made a couple of pillowcases and um, quilting them, it was really annoying shutting them through the machine with the batting that I got. It was just like a polyester wadding and I don't think um, it's very user friendly. So I was happy to use fleece and then since making my quilted coat, I used um, proper, you know, batting for that. And that was also way smoother. So. Um, mine's changed on the uh, quilting process, so that's good because um, I do want to make a couple of quilts this year. Well, finish a quilt and make another quilt. Um, okay, my other finished projects, I'll go now to my most recent one, is uh, this little Cielo or Kilo or Cielo top by Closet Core. I'm never sure how to pronounce things. You may remember this um, sheer velvet dot from when I made a Wilder gown. And um, yes, I, at the time of cutting out the Wilder gown, had um, plenty left over. So I thought, why not just quickly cut out a Cielo top and um, have that ready to make whenever I have a lapse in time. Um, you know, a little moment in time where I can whip it up. And I did because I'm making some black trousers at the moment and I was stuck on something and I just wanted to, to diverge for a moment and um, go off on a tangent and this was the perfect project for that. Um, this fabric is a little annoying to sew, I mentioned last time, but um, yeah, I absolutely love this top. I actually have already worn this three times since I finished it um, last week, so uh, fantastic. Um, I find it a lot more comfortable than actually the Wilder Gown version of this um, to wear for um, concerts um, just because the, the Wilder Gown has the ruched top which isn't as comfortable for my viola playing. So anyway, this is the view a, you know, just plain version of the Cielo. Um, I also have made the big sleeve version, the lantern sleeve, but obviously didn't have my fabric for that. It actually usually has a cuff. Um, of self fabric that's um, on the end of the sleeves, but I um, omitted that because I don't think it looks so good in this sheer. Um, and also, um, I mean, I could have done it in a solid black, I was considering that, but um, it was going to be too much of a pain to find matching, matching um, fabric. I also did the bias binding neckline because it's sheer and I did the binding so it shows on the outside rather than tucking it into the inside. And um, I actually prefer this way of finishing bias binding if I've got nice bias, of course. Nice and matching bias. So that's um, my first latest finished um, project and my second, no, third finished make of the year. So there's that and there's this. Um, and there's my first finished make of the year, which is the quilted coat. So I'll just show you. Um, yes, I have had this um, quilted, quilt um, fabric stash of, um, stack from Nerida Hansen of um, Jennifer Buron designs. Um, her handle is Jen and Furu, I think. And um, they're all, so all the um, fabrics match. Sorry, I feel a bit like rambly and umming and ahhing uh today. Um, just probably a bit early. And I am so, so, so proud of how I've matched those along the seams. I've actually got a highlight on my Instagram where you can like watch the whole process if you, um, if you love it. Um, I used the Crescent Quilt Pattern by um, Cotton and Joy. So it's got these um, right way up crescents and upside down crescents and then also empty blank squares. And I scaled that pattern to 80% instead of 100 because, um, you know, I just thought that would look better on the coat. And I'm really pleased with how that came out. Um, I, or I used the uh, Megan Nielsen Hovia jacket pattern because I already made one um, and because I wanted to make this in two weeks I needed something that I already had already made. I did modify it a bit um, 
and it gets view D, the longer length, um, by putting a tie in this velvet tie, which I love. And I also, because it doesn't actually have closures, I added, um, I extended the right front to um, overlap a bit underneath the left. And I've got a little button there to secure that so it doesn't flop. But I'm not totally happy with that. Um, it, I would rather, because sometimes it doesn't hang even at the bottom when I'm wearing it like that, one of, the right piece will hang out at the bottom, which the right front, which I don't like. So I may change that, but that will take a lot of work. So I don't know, we'll see how I go this winter with it. Um, but this has to be one of those makes that I feel really truly represents my personality and me. So, um, yeah, I just, I really love it. And even Michael said it's one of the most amazing and favorite things that he, I had ever made um, for him. Well, I didn't make it for him, but you know what I mean? Oh, I just can't really talk this morning. <laughs> so anyway, well, maybe I shouldn't film podcast episodes early in the morning ever again. So anyway, that's my quilted coat. Um, absolutely love it. I'll pop in some pictures. Michael outdid himself taking gorgeous pictures while we're in Japan. Um, I'm so thankful to him for being such a great husband of Instagram. Um, so yeah, um, I, I can't remember if there's anything else I wanted to say on that. Um, I just did really simple quilting, just like around the shapes. Um, stitching. I didn't do a kind of an all over stitching pattern per se. So that's my quilted coat, my biggest project. And actually this has been a goal project of mine for many years. So I'm really proud of myself for making that. Um, it was totally a journey. Do go on to my Instagram and, um, look at the highlights. Um, so I, I made a lot of videos, process videos for once, and actually it's really nice to have them to look back on. So I hope that gets a little wear this winter as well. Um, I just can't imagine it because it's just so hot at the moment, but um, I'm sure I'll wear, I'll, I'll wear that a lot. Okay, um, that's pretty much all I have for my um, finished projects, finished objects. I do have um, a whip and so oh, actually I might have a few whips. I also did just want to mention that for Christmas I managed to make quite a lot of gifts. So I made my nephews a t-shirt each. I made a friend's, a colleague's baby, some little panties and I made um, some knitting bags, knitting project bags for my mum and my sister and me. And um, also just uh, last month, I made a t-shirt for my best friend whose birthday it was. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, I feel really organized with my gift knit, gift knits, gift sews at the moment. Um, and I hope to stay that way throughout the year. All right, I'm just gonna pop up and get a couple of those whips to show you now. <laughs> okay. Um, you'll remember I said at the start of the video that I've been really enjoying, um, I watched back my last video and it was really nice to see that I had actually started to use some of the fabrics that I bought already for the projects that I wanted. So it's been really, really great to do that. Here is um, what was in my drawer of shame last time, I think, and still is my Wilde gown in this gorgeous um, Liberty Silk Jet. I show it to you today as uh, means of keeping myself accountable because I am going to finish this up this month, okay? So I am determined to finish this. I actually set myself a goal this year of just polishing off one whip per month. So um, February was the easiest, which was this one. This one is for March and for April, I have um, this quilt top that I finished yonks ago like probably probably a year ago now um this godric quilt by um make a mess quilt patterns um which i used uh just spotlight fabrics for and i really love the color choices that i made i think this looks really really cool so now that i know that um yeah that's just my dog now that i know that quilting is actually not 
as bad as I thought. And also, uh, one thing I did new with my um, quilted jacket was I used spray basting, and that was also a big success. Highly recommend. It can be a bit messy, but I have all these big plastic sheets from um, when we got a new bed when we moved into this house. So, um, yeah, I've got all these big plastic sheets, and I just put them out on the deck and just sprayed so um that worked really well i really want this as a wall hanging for um for um my me made may photos i'm still not sure whether i'm actually going to do me made may actually um my dog's really keen to get out of the room so i'm just gonna let him out quickly there you go darling yeah that that's just one of my dogs. Um, the other one's happy to just be lying here, chill out. But the other one's a bit um, ADD. We call him attention deficit dog. Um, and he's just got to be walking around. So he'll probably come to the door and want to come back in. Anyway, I digress. I want to do um, have this as a wall hanging actually in this room, on this wall, um, to have a nice, easy backdrop for taking nice pictures um, at home and also for Me Made May. Um, so I can take, easily take a picture every day and have it look quite nice, I hope. Um, I'm not sure whether I will participate in Me Made May again. I find it kind of difficult because I don't always get dressed um, every day. I mean, I do get dressed, but sometimes I'm just at home. My job is not as many contact hours, so I'm not really working on Monday to Friday. I'm very often working a, a bit on a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then there's a lot of blacks because, you know, on Saturday I'll only be wearing black for work. So, I don't know. I might just post, um, not every day, but um, when I do wear things, outfits and such. So, that's um, my other whip that I'm determined to do in April. Um, I hope my plan works for just knocking them out in one month. Um, I feel a bit behind um, in my plans, my making plans. Um, all self-imposed, of course, um, since I actually want to be working on a birthday dress right now and also have already sewn some gifts and also be ready to do that with at the end of the month. But I'm still on my February make, my big February make, which is the black trousers I mentioned in my last sewing video. Um, the assembly line trousers in this tensile um, twill that I also had as a new acquisition at the end of my last video. So it's really, as I say, I'm really proud of myself, but it's straight away pretty much using fabrics that I just recently got. Um, so with these pants, there's quite a bit to them. Um, they've got these gorgeous pleats in the front and they've got um, two darts in the back as well. Um, there's a fly zip, which um, honestly was quite tricky to puzzle out. Um, but I managed it. They've also got these like little tabs on the back for um, putting just like a little button. It's purely decorative. So actually I kind of wish I'd left that out now because it's going to be a pain to do the buttons and buttons hole, buttonholes because I actually put band roll in the um, waistband. I haven't, as you can see, finished. I haven't stitched in the ditch yet. It's all just pins, sorry, part of it's coming out. But I put band roll in the waistband um, just for a bit more stability because this fabric is so drapey and flowy and I just wanted something that would give a quite a lot of structure to the waistband. And I've heard about um, people using band roll before, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, by people, I mean Stacy of the Crooked Hem um, says that sometimes she uses band roll in waistbands. But I, she's never used it in a waistband that requires a button. So I'm actually not really sure whether I'll actually even be able to do a buttonhole in the band roll. Um, I don't have any spare band roll to try this out with some of my fabric. Um, so I'm just going to go for it um, and pray to the sewing gods that um, they will look down kindly upon me and help me make a buttonhole through the band roll. Actually, just saying it, I don't think it's going to work. Maybe I just do a decorative button on the front, like a fake button, and I do hook some bars in the actual uh, pant there. Um, so, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. 
Um, I actually really love these pants already. The fit is so great. The fabric feels amazing. The reason why the fit is so great is because I tried the top down center out method I mentioned before. So um, I'll put a link to Stacy's like YouTube series on it. Um, it is just, it's this new method of fitting pants that is um, really body neutral. So you're not talking about like full tummy adjustment and all of that. It's just, you're literally just manipulating fabric. And what I like about it most is that you're preserving the design intent. So you really go into looking at what is the intent um, that the designer had for this um, for this design and you try to stick with that. So um, I'm really loving them. I did have a bit of an issue with the out seam not matching up and there's been some bubbling um, on that seam. So I'm probably going to undo that and um, I mean, I already overlocked it, but I'm just going to chop that off and do a quarter inch seam instead of a one, one inch um, and quarter inch instead of a one centimeter um, and then just re realign the um, out seams together and um, sew that again so that there are no bubbles and see how that works because the bubbles really annoy me. But I am really proud of myself. There's been like a lot of new things, a lot of learning um, happening with these pants. So the top down center out method, the fly, the using band roll, the um, making pants in general. I've only made a few pants before. So um, that's my main whip at the moment. I hope to finish it actually by this weekend. Um, and then get started on my birthday dress. So my birthday is in a week and I really want to make something gorgeous for that. Um, I got some fabric for it. I actually have to get the rest of it to show you. Okay, so there's a um, designer like that makes clothes and um, like, you know, just like a normal fashion house type thing. They have started releasing their own patterns like a kit. It's called Robert's Wood. Robert Woods. Uh, sorry, I'll just you know write that on the bottom as usual. And they, I've been eyeing off their flower pattern pop in the picture for ages and um, then they released this bow dress patchwork pattern and I am obsessed with it and I've seen a couple of people on Instagram make one now um, I'll pop their pictures in too so um, it de really depends what fabric you choose it can have a really different look but I absolutely adore it and I asked my sister for my birthday to give me a gift voucher for those so I could buy those patterns because they are so expensive it's like 34 pounds for the dress pattern. Um, so she got me a really generous voucher for a, um, a 34 pound dress and also for a top. So I got the flower top as well. So I'm really, really excited about that. And the, um, the flower dress will be my, um, no, the bow dress will be my birthday dress. Um, I want to use monochrome sort of all fabrics in the same sort of color. So I've got these two green um, remnants. Well, actually I bought this and only used a teeny amount of it. It's the it's an Atelier Brunette um, Dobby, viscose Dobby, um, I got from my design a long time ago. I don't remember the name of the color. It might be Cactus. Um, I got black for this and made a Calais shirt, Closet Core Calais, and I got green and just used it to trim around to go with this, um, this silk robe that I made, that I don't know if I ever actually took pictures of, but I made it for my wedding. It's this gorgeous um, sage sort of colored, very silvery, gray, green, um, sheer silk. Um, so that and that are what I had to match with. And so I got from the fabric store some organza. This looks darker um, when it's all in like folded up, but when it's a single layer, um, I think it actually goes quite well with my existing fabrics. And also similar deal, I'll just put that over there for a minute, um, similar deal with the other green fabric I got, which is this one. And this is another one that I've been eyeing for a long time, this sort of checkered um, sheer, 
forget what it is, is it also silk? Um, that the fabric store produced, I think it's one of their own fabrics. Um, just look at that drape, it's beautiful. Um, in this kind of forest green um, that I really love. So I'm so excited for this dress. I feel like it will be quite a lot of work, but because I love piecing, it might go by really quickly. I hope, because I've got like a week to make it now. So um, yeah, I've really got to finish my pants today um, so I can just get going on this dress. Um, yes, so, um, that's my first new fabric that I got. I'm going chronologically backwards. Since it's been three months since my last video, there's quite a lot of fabric to show. I'll just go through kind of quickly. When I was at the fabric store, they had a Liberty for 50% off sale, which is kind of unheard of. So, um, of course I had to get just a bit. And as part of my New Year's resolution of like trying new colors, I got this, which actually even just holding it up now, I think is gonna suit me really, really well. Um, it's just got a lovely depth in that sort of navy indigo purplish color with the pops of the um, bright red coral type color. Um, so I really love this Liberty, it's a cotton, lawn, which I also have never used a Liberty Cotton lawn before. I have some in my stash, I think, um, which I haven't used yet. So um, there's that. I also have, on that same trip, got this black, uh, this gray, sorry, yeah, as I said early, this gray fabric that's got a little bit of stretch in it. Um, this is Deadstock Designer, and I believe it may be Scanlon and Theodore. Um, because I got the black version of this fabric um, ages ago and I made some Pietra pants, I'll pop a picture in, um, which I hacked quite heavily to be a really close fitting legging look and I absolutely love those pants. I wear them all the time but because they're more, I can wear them for concerts, I hardly ever wear them day to day and they're the kind of pant that I want to have for day to day. So I'm going to make a pair out of this gray and these can be my day-to-day -day, um, Pietras. They're so comfy because it's got that stretch. Um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to it. It's got stretch, but it's also like really sturdy. So um, it's just my perfect pant fabric for that sort of pant. Um, I'm really excited about that. Um, okay, and then now going back to some online orders I made. I actually, um, so one of my sewing friends here, Faith, on Instagram, Faith May Makes, um, I'll pop her handle in, she, her sister-in-law um, is a, maybe a graphic designer, and she started designing fabric, so it's really exciting. Um, I think the description is like, you know, mid-century inspired, and it really, it's, that description suits the fabrics to a T. It is gorgeous it's a tensile linen which I think also I'm excited about using I'm just going to try and unfold this a bit without giving myself a pain of a job to fold back up later so this is the first one I got um, the pattern has a name I think it might be relative or family or something like that um, so it's this very big lavender grid with these pops of smaller um, stripes within them, also in a pastel sort of colorway. And I just think it is so cool. I love this. My other sewing friend, Shannon, also got this fabric and she's already made her dress out of it. So I'm going to put a picture in of it so you can see what the fabric is like. Sorry, there's like loose threads coming off my Liberty Tana lawn. Um, so I'll pop that in. Um, I'm really excited to use this and I'm going to make an Oxford dress by, I'm not going to pronounce the name properly, so I'll just write it underneath it, a French pattern company. Um, she has been so kind. She reached out to me and asked if I would like some patterns um, because she recently translated them into English. So I got those before Christmas. I feel really bad. I haven't sewn them up yet, but I am planning to they're very high on my list, um, hopefully within the next month. So definitely on April's plans, if not at, at the end of March. So that's that fabric, what that's going to turn into very soon, I hope. The other fabric I got, oh, sorry, I didn't even mention the name of the designer. It's Emily Tiang, Tiang? Oh gosh, I'm just like butchering everything this morning. 
Note to self, don't make a podcast in the morning. <laughs> so this is the other fabric. I forget the name of this one. I'll write it down though. Um, it's a beautiful, again, with that lavender lilac color with forest green, my favorite, and little white dots just to emphasize um, and give a bit of geometric randomness um, to the fabric. So I got, this is enough for a top um, and I'm not really sure what I'm gonna make yet um, with that. So I'll just keep thinking on that. Um, but uh, Faith made the Merchant and Mills Florence top in her fabric, not this one, but a different one. And it looks so good, I'll pop in a picture. I think this sort of fabric looks really dynamic in something that's gathered, got a bit of gathering in it, um, but also mostly simple and plain. So I may also make that exact same top because I think it looks so good in um, the fabric that Faith used. Okay, yep, so that's the Emily Tian um, fabric. That was a pre-order, so I ordered it a long time ago and it only just came um, last month. So um, that was exciting. I Another thing I got from the fabric store um, is this um, cotton um, chambray fabric that's embroidered with, um, it looks like wattle embroidery. It just looks really, really pretty. And um, I was influenced to get this because um, Anna Van Der Zee on Instagram, her handle is Notes and Stitches in New Zealand, used some for a closet call Calais shirt and I loved it. And I'm actually thinking of turning this into a shirt dress. Um, I'm thinking maybe the named Saraste shirt dress. So um, that's my plans for that. From This is from the fabric store. A lot of my stuff is from the fabric store. You'll see in a minute. I also um, got some fabrics in Japan on my trip. Um, I got these quilting, quilting fabric things. Um, because I'm heavy into quilting now. I'm sorry, the light's just suddenly gone, not so great here. Um, I think this is, um, yeah, it's a Scandinavian actually designer, but I got it in one of the, sort of like the spotlight equivalent in Japan. I was actually looking for Nani Iro, um, but they didn't have any and I was really, really disappointed, but um, maybe next time I can get some Nanny Eero. I've never ha um, used any Nanny Eero and I think it's really beautiful. So um, I hope one day that um, I can find some and use it, but this will be a cute quilt one day. Um, other fabrics I got, um, this Liberty um, that's printed in Japan. This is a good souvenir with these neon pops I can't even, This I just love this so much. It's quite expensive, so I only got enough for a top. Um, also not sure what to make, but you know, be a nice memento of my holiday. And um, cause I needed to get over the tax threshold, I just got this tiny little um, thing. Maybe I'll pop it in a quilt as well. Okay, and I got some old, um, some cheap silks. I think they were all these three together, less than five dollars. Um, maybe, yeah. I think it was like a thousand yen to get these three um, old kimono silks, uh, remnant silks. So this one's got like a very subtle um, imprint pattern on it. Um, yes, I do. I love these. These are probably also just for like quilting or something. I kind of, you know. When I'm on holiday, buy a bit le with less purpose. But I did have an, I went to, um, so uh, I mentioned before that I'm in the Indie Bindi Society and I met up with Ames of Indie Bindi while I was in Tokyo and we went to the Kata Kata workshop, um, which was really exciting. I So I got the lobster Kata Kata print for my Cielo top with the big sleeve. So put that in. I've already spoken about it um, this episode. And so it was really cool to go to their workshop and I thought, because I was fresh off of making my um, quilted coat, that I would make a summer jacket quilting a bunch of their fabrics. So um, they've got these just small squares which are used for like actually wrapping things and um, other stuff. Um, I've got 
within a sea sort of thing. So I've got like little clams, I've got more of the lobster. Um, and then I got a bunch of like um, wall hangings, tenagui, I think they're called. I'm totally butchering it. Um, and I'm going to cut them up to use in my quilted summer jacket. So there's that pattern. There's this croc. I won't cut his head up, but I will cut his body up. Um, there's some octopus and some fish. And there's my favorite one, this big whale, which actually I'm going to get out to show you. This one is my favorite, so it will be a big panel on the back. I'm thinking maybe even a dress rather than a summer coat because this is quite, this is quite big. Um, so, looks like this. It's just so beautiful, this big whale. Um, and that'll be the main panel on the back of a dress. And then the rest of it will be quilted. I think that could look really cool. Um, so using all these other ones to quilt with it. I'm really excited about that. Um, but who knows when that, that'll get done. The main fabric I got at the Cutter Cutter workshop was the octopus, the taco. Um, I loved this a lot um, online and I almost got it so many times, but it was really fun to see it in person and have it as a special memento of um, my time and of meeting up with Ames and meeting the designers at Kata Kata. Um, so this is another new to me color, red, which I am keen on using this year. Um, I love this, got those pops, contrast of that um, tealy, bright turquoise, turquoise blue. Um, which I think breaks up the red really nicely. So this is going to be a top, definitely having the plans for a Calais, closet core Calais top. Um, but, you know, plans change. If I see new patterns or go through my pattern stash, I may want to make something else. But, um, yeah, I definitely want to make that this year or maybe even for Chinese New Year next year to have, um, to try out red as a new colour for me. Um, other Japan fabrics I got, this silly... Um, quilted, pre-quilted fabric for making a knitting project bag um, with Sumiko Garashi on it. Um, I absolutely love Sumiko Garashi. I've never seen the cartoon. It's a cartoon, um, translates to life in the corner. And they've all got these um, funny personality traits, but I just, I love them so much. Um, I've got a lot of cute little plushy toys and stuff of Sumiko Garashi. So I'm excited to have a knitting project bag um, out of this. I'll pop a picture in of the project bag that I made, um, pattern that I made for myself, my mum and my sister, um, because I love it. It turned out really well. I used a Japanese um, sewing book pattern for that from a book that I got just at a um, garage sale. I think I may have shown it in a previous episode before. So um, yeah, that's what that's going to be. I also got some fabric for my nephews. Um, well, from... Um, my littlest nephew mainly, it's this dinosaur fabric, which I don't think is that cute. There were cuter dinosaur fabrics around, but the reason I got it, and I'm just trying to find it now, is because it has a specific dinosaur that he is his favorite. I mean, you know, five-year-olds have favorite dinosaurs. I mean, he's three, but um, he, ha he loves the Mosasaurus. So, that's on there and I feel like I've got, I had to get it when I saw that because it's a kind of an obscure dinosaur that you wouldn't normally see like just outwardly named on fabric. So um, I hope he'll be chuffed with that. I'll make something for his birthday. Um, the other fabric I got for gift sewing is this Hungry Caterpillar fabric. Anything Hungry Caterpillar goes down really well here in Australia. It's very popular. Um, so I'll probably, you know, probably make gifts for friends' babies out of that. And the last thing to show and the last thing I got in Japan is this very sort of heavyweight um, fabric. I think it's probably linen, but you can see it's got two sides. I'll just unfold it a bit, you know, um, so you can see it's got this check side and then it's got this um, dot on the other side. I thought that was really cool. I got a lot of this because it wasn't very expensive, three meters. Um, 
So I could make a dress, a really dramatic dress. I could make a coat or something, but I really want to feature this um, double-sidedness of it. So I don't really know what I'm going to make yet, but it's just simmering away as I, you know, surf on Pinterest and um, find inspiration for what I can make with this. Any suggestions, by all means, like um, write something in the comments or reach out to me on Instagram. Um, I'm way more active on Instagram than I am monitoring the comments here. So if you really want to have like a long chat with me, just pop on to Insta. Um, my handle's in the description below. Um, i am got to rush because I've got to go to work. So um, I don't know if I'll do that again, film a podcast episode before I go to work because I don't think I may, I was very coherent um, just now. But anyway, um, one of my resolutions is to actually just commit a bit more to my YouTube. Um, so I am going to just um, not be worried about having everything nice and actually just do stuff. So that um, also um, translates to what I share on Instagram. I'm trying to be a lot more real, a lot more... Um, authentic, less like planned and um, posed and stuff. So in my stories and whatever, that's always just, I'm just trying to um, showcase a bit more of the behind the scenes sort of actual real process of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, please reach out to me. I do like chatting um, to people about crafty stuff, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't have made this um, YouTube channel. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm not making sense today, but I hope you still enjoyed seeing all my fabrics and um, some of my um, special projects. And I'll see you next time. I hope you have some lovely sewing time ahead of you. Okay, bye.